Welcome to episode 2 of our Avalon Vista Romantic Rhine River Cruise Vlog Series. In this episode we leave Amsterdam and arrive in Cologne. We show you more of what the Avalon Vista has to offer and you will find out whether it is worth enduring the freezing conditions for the sail through the Rhine Gorge. The Amsterdam Rhine Canal was built to connect Amsterdam to the busy Rhine River. The journey from Amsterdam to the Rhine is around 30 kilometers. We always enjoy a bit of cruise ship spotting while we're away, so it was really nice to see the Hapag Lloyd Ice Strengthened Expedition Ship, the Hanseatic Inspiration. As we began our 330 kilometer journey, it immediately became obvious how busy this stretch of water is, with an almost constant stream of commercial barges heading in both directions. It was so much busier than our previous experience when we sailed down the Danube on the Tui Isla river cruise ship. Sometimes the sights of commercial barges was punctuated with some other strange forms of transport. Right then. So we've just had another lovely meal, haven't we, in the restaurant, Paulie Morgan? Oh, I didn't realise. I thought you'd uh, thought you'd gone so low. I just thought it was Carol loves to travel. <laughs> no. So another fantastic meal, which we'll show you here now. We started off with um, I had a lovely salad, avocado salad, and you had some um, soup. I had. I'm not a sweet potato fan at all. So I had sweet potato soup. <laughs> and it was delicious. You had foam on the top. And it had a foam that was spicy. Mm, spicy spicy foam. foam. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? And I have to say it was delicious. Mm. And then I had um, some, it was bean stew. Um, and it was with cabbage and like a cheese. It was very odd. But actually it was really delicious. And I had like sort of chips on the top, as in crisps, which was really nice. And you know what they say about beans, don't you? Beans, beans, hines. No. <laughs> no, I was going to say beans, beans, the musical fruit. <laughs> the more you eat. The more you toot. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you had fish, didn't you? I cod. had cod. Mm. I, I did have a cod and it was very nice. But you had couscous in the. You had couscous, I did. I was like, couscous is just like sawdust. Why would you eat that? I don't know. Sorry, couscous fans. <laughs> But yeah, and then I had a fruit plate and um, some ice cream, which only had a little bit. And you had chocolate mousse. I had chocolate mousse. The mousse was okay. Yeah, I'm not saying spectacular, but the mousse was okay. But I had ice cream as well. The ice cream was exceptional. Yeah, the ice creams on here are yeah. amazing. Yes. So and, yes. And the, the service again was. Yeah, we had dragon, didn't we? We had dragon, uh, and I can't remember the lady who kept uh, recharging my your beer. Glass. beer. But, but we'll get her name because she was brilliant. Yes, but if me and Carol ever fall out, she's the next Mrs. Morgan. <laughs> hey! So anyway, so then we went to, we met we some had, lovely people. if we ever fall out, we're not going to fall yeah, out. Yeah, we've met so many lovely people already on this cruise, haven't we? We have, yeah. So we've um, enjoyed their company. Uh, we went up to the lounge, had one for the road, and now we're back in the cabin. Yes. We're quite near the back of the ship. Um, and we'll show you now, um, if, see if you can hear the noise. It's not too obtrusive, but listen to this. So, yeah, so if you're picking a cabin on the ship, you will get a little bit of a vibration towards the back of the ship, so something to consider. Um, but it's not affecting yeah. us at all. We'll let's, let you know in the morning, well, but talk, I think... Let's just talk about what Carol just said, though. Let's see if you can hear the noise. Yeah, but you know what I mean. But let, okay. Breakfast in the morning is from half seven till ten. So I've set the alarm for quarter to ten. <laughs> I've set my alarm uh, for two minutes to ten. Yes. So, but we'll be away. Before, well, I'll be yeah. away before then. But I think we are on the Rhine now, aren't we? Yes, That's we're now on the Rhine, yeah. and we're heading to Cologne. So, um, and for our first time to Cologne, isn't yeah. it? So we're but looking forward to that. Just imagine Ed Cooper going to smile tomorrow. We're going on one of the uh, other included excursion, the walking tour, isn't yeah. it? It's an hour and a half walking tour. So we're looking forward to that. And apparently, Cologne Cathedral. It's yeah. up there with the best of the cathedrals. And so, we're not um, getting in till like 2 p.m. And we're sailing out at about half past 10. So it'd be lovely to sail out and see it all lit up. Yes. So that's the thing about river cruises. It's not conventional sort of nine to five sort of hours, is it? I know you don't always get that with ocean cruising, but um, and that's quite nice, isn't it? We've got a bit of a, a bit of a lie in before we hit. Dolly Parton wouldn't like it then, would she? If it's not nine to five conventional stuff. So. 
Anyway, as you can see, Paul's brought another beer to the cabin. He's, he's got little uh, glasses, haven't you, Paul? No, <laughs> we're just big hands. <laughs> ah, the funky glasses, though, aren't they? they? Are, but that's um, an eighth of a pint, is all that eighth. is. An eighth. Yeah. It's not eight. <laughs> anyway, Paul's going to finish the beer, we're going to pop the telly on, see if we can see a bit more of the James Bond. I managed to watch about eight minutes last night. <laughs> so, the film's three hours long. So, film, lots of good films, Yeah, uh, lots of good it? films on the mm. telly. So, when I put the telly on earlier, it says, would, would you like to continue watching that film? So I'm figuring out at eight minutes a night, this River Cruise needs to be about four and a half months long for me to finish that film. <laughs> yes. But anyway, we're having a fab time so we far, are. aren't we? Been great, really, eh? really enjoying yeah. it. So we'll catch you uh, tomorrow when we. Uh, in the morning. Yes, where we yeah. head to Cologne. Right, right then. then. So Cologne. Cologne. After uh, another lovely breakfast, the breakfast on here are absolutely superb, aren't they? Cracking, yeah. Well, all the food, to be fair, we haven't had a bad meal, have we? Um, lots of healthy options with their Avalon Fresh menus. Um, You've been very happy with all the food, haven't you? And you know how Paul loves his food. Yeah, I'm a bit sort of, you know, a, a one-trick pony, I suppose, because once I find something I like, and I found that the chef that is affectionately known as Panda yes. by, by the rest of the staff, who's absolutely lovely, yeah. uh, he makes a spectacular omelette, and he doesn't, yes. he doesn't scrimp on the ingredients. And so I've been... Omelette, omelette all the time. Omelette <laughs> all the way. Let me tell you what isn't quite so good is when a panda makes you a spectacular omelette and you haven't got your glasses on and you think, ooh, I'm going to have a bit of tomato sauce for that. Yes. And as I, was, as I was putting the tomato sauce on from the bowl, <laughs> I thought, hmm, that's a funny place to put tomato sauce because it's next to where the fresh pancakes are. And I had strawberry sauce on my on my <laughs> omelette. Ah, it was like a runny jam, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, was, yeah. I mean, the strawberry sauce was nice. But so, it what's, did... what have you learnt from that? Don't have strawberry sauce for your <laughs> no. omelette. Put your glasses on. on. Yes, we haven't gone all arty farty and changed the angle of our lens for um, uh, artistic purposes. We're just trying to cut down on the glare in Carol's glasses. Yeah, and the, we're staying in such a sorry to interrupt. We're staying in such a fantastic cabin with panoramic windows, it's hard not to get any glare on my glasses. So anyway, we just have to ignore that. So, souls. Souls. So after our fabulous breakfast, we had just a relaxing time in the in the cabin. We're loving our cabin. Um, well, there's a, gonna be a, a link here to our cabin tour. And we'll tell you, this is, we'll show you why we're loving this cabin because um, we've got floor to ceiling windows and we just lie on the bed and watch these fabulous views. After admiring the lovely views, we eventually arrived in the German city of Cologne. And then it was time for our included walking tour of Cologne. Now, when you book an Avalon cruise, um, you get all, every destination that you go to a port, you will have ex included excursions. There are optional ones that you can pay for if you want to, but there's always a selection always of at least two, isn't yeah. there? Um, and they do 
excursions for those that have mobility issues they um, do excursions for those that do you know that are able to do like a walking tour like us and they do um, excursion for those that want to do go up that next level and do either hiking or riding so they really cater don't they for, for well, that's, that's bicycle riding by the way not horse riding <laughs> We haven't seen any horse reading, but maybe they do. Horse reading. Horse reading. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so they've got bikes on board. So if you wanted to go off and, and any time that you wanted to hire a bike from them, I'm sure yeah, um, yeah, you'd you be do, able to, yeah. to do that too. And we saw, saw some of the crew as well. Yeah, um, they've got bikes too. Bouncing so, around on bikes yeah, as well. Yeah, which so. was great to yeah. see, wasn't it? So back to Cologne then, Paul. Yes. Do you want to tell them about the walking tour? We're all split into groups, different colours, and our guide's name was Michael. It was quite interesting because where we were actually docked he said this area between the two bridges that we were docked, which wasn't a massive area, 93% yeah. of it was was um, decimated during the Second World War. Yeah. So it's, um, it's quite a strange situation where you'll have houses that the top part of the house or restaurant or shop or bar or whatever it might be is 80 years old. Yeah. But the cellar or basement of that particular building could be 800 years old. Yeah. So, um, yes, um, the cathedral, which is is, um, is sandstone, I believe. Yeah. And it means that over the years, it, tr it makes the stone go very black. So it looks like it's dirty, but it's not dirty. It's just that the sandstone. Goes, and, and it does, and it looks like something out of a Batman film, but quite it a does. spectacular sight. Yeah. I'm really, really interested in tour. We very found diverse very, city. Yes, very diverse. Yeah. We found some very, very strange statues where I'm sure Carol will pop a picture in where <laughs> there, there's these two statues talking. Uh. If you go up and rub this man's giant nose, no comments, please, <laughs> um, it brings you good luck. And obviously lots of people must have rubbed this uh, fella's nose because the statues are made of brass yeah. and his nose is as shiny as shiny can be. It was really interesting, yeah. wasn't it? it was good. Um, also talking about the flooding because obviously the Rhine, the levels do change yeah. a lot. Um, and that's another thing to consider when you're thinking about river cruising. And But uh, Cologne does get flooded and they've actually now put in these uh, floodgates, haven't they? Uh, via the city wall. So, um, not the city wall, but to stop the water yeah, before it gets to the, the city. building, Jack. Because again, Cause they, they add they had two lots of flooding over the space of two years quite uh, you know fairly recently like yeah. 2009 and then 2011 yeah. I think. we'll confirm those dates yeah. but, um, but um the flood system they've got these um metal poles that are sank into the ground yeah and then you just undo a few things and then they pop up and then slats go in between them and of course obviously the general public are encouraged to help out with this and they reckon that if everybody pulls together they can have the flood wall up in 10 minutes yeah yeah it was really well, interesting so um yeah so if you get a chance to go on the walk into our cologne we would definitely yeah, recommend it, yeah, it. Yeah. we've had glorious weather haven't we it's been cold it's october um but the sun's come out every day yeah it's been good yeah. um so we came back we met um this lovely couple from uh they're originally from scotland actually but now we live in brisbane in australia called duncan and fran and um we came back with them after the tour didn't we we yeah. get on really well um and we just sat on top of the deck watching the activity going on in cologne and it's perfect River cruising, you're right in the heart of um, of cities, aren't you? Yeah. And it was just, we just sat there chatting um, before we knew it, it was time to eat again. Oh, I'll tell you something, it's like an eating fair. <laughs> and it is going back to the beauty of river cruises. You don't, because you get some people, oh, I don't want to be tied to going on an excursion. Well, you don't have to be mm. tied to anything because you're so close to everything. If you want to get off, yeah. the only thing you're tied to is they will say to you, right, this boat today is sailing at this time. Exactly. Make sure you're on it. Yeah. Other than that, you're free to do whatever you want. Perfect. Yeah, no, no, that's right. Yeah. So for dinner, I started with a um, palm ham and melon salad which was absolutely gorgeous. Do you know what I'm actually eating a lot of, which is naughty, is bread. And the reason for that is they've got the most fantastic balsamic veneer from... Um, Vinegar. What did I say? You should have half seen it. <laughs> balsamic vinegar. That's it. Um, I wrote it down because I've, I'm going to buy some, I'm going to order some online when I get home because it's so good. It is called Modena Casa Rinaldi balsamic vinegar and it is thick and awesome. But also I wrote down the olive oil because the combination of the two oh, is just amazing. heavenly and the olive oil is called Frantoy Cetrera C-E-T-R-E-R-A Primo um, and this olive oil is just oh my gosh. We look like 
we actually know what we're doing when we're having our olive oil and our balsamic. You make nice little pretty pictures. We do. We draw pictures, but quickly when you put when you draw your picture with a balsamic, it disappears. Yes. Disappears. So do try that. Like mist in the night. (laughs) So to go well with the bread as well, I had artichoke soup, which was delicious. Yes. And you had the lamb, didn't you? I had for my main, I had um, a herb crusted rack of lamb which was actually two lamb chops. Um, they were, i got to be honest, I know these chefs say they should be really pink and what have you, and they were very pink, but they were nice. But they were right on the cusp for me of almost not being done enough. But well, it only like our lamb Yeah, we like a bit more. And it came <laughs> with polenta. Yes. But it but it was quite a wet polenta, and i got to be honest, I'm not a polenta fan. So I said, look, is there any chance I could have some potatoes with mine instead of the polenta? And he said, yeah, of course you can. So I had a couple of, I had a couple of spuds with mine. Yeah, you did. A couple did. of wild spuds, and it was lovely. <laughs> the lamb was lovely, the spuds mm. were lovely. And then I had a cheese plate. You did? Yeah. It was a plate made out of cheese. I couldn't believe it. I mean, it was like, <laughs> like literally. No, it was three different sorts of cheeses, a few crackers and some grapes, but the one cheese, oh my mm. days, it was like so smelly and so strong. But there was like this... Um, it was, it was almost like a marmalade with it, mm. and it just the sweetness of that with the, with the smelly cheese and the bit of on the cracker. It yeah. was superb. So for dinner, we've actually um, got into a bit of a pattern, haven't we? We've, we've met obviously Duncan and Fran that we mentioned earlier um, from Brisbane, and we've also met Shima and Sue, Sue. who are lovely from Sydney in Australia. Um, and the six of us just seem to sort of um, like migrate a, together, don't we? We're like a gang. <laughs> Got our own ah, so we've got a table for six, and we're yeah. fabulous company. Yeah. So if you're watching, guys, thank you so much for this week because we've laughed so much. Oh, we? big time! Yeah. It's been so much fun. What happens before dinner is just so you know, if you come on an Avalon cruise, is we've got a cruise director called Daniela, and she's great. She's full of information, and she, she obviously knows this area so well. Which, but every time at quarter to five, to quarter to six <laughs> to quarter to seven's happy hour so everyone sort of migrates in the panorama yeah. lounge don't they for happy and it's hour half price everything's, everything's half, half price, price. Woo! and then um from quarter to seven till seven p.m daniel comes up and she'll have updated the avalon app which um you have on your phone and it shows you all like the information for the next day and she just runs through it to make sure that you understand everything yeah. and that everything's really clear so if you don't want to uh, if you if it's too technical or you just don't want to use it she would just run through everything and she prints paper copies yeah, off for those that want it well. if anybody stick your hand up if you want a paper copy yeah. and she goes not through many everything people do, to be no. fair, do they? and she's really thorough she is and she's she's very al- good and she always ends her talk with a joke she does and first of all you think oh god because sometimes when people tell jokes you think it can be really good or rubbish and her, she's funny yeah, she's, she's really good so then it was time for nighttime entertainment wasn't it after dinner and um, I know we love entertainment and I know that a river cruise experience, certainly with Avalon, they don't, it's not geared up for entertainment, they don't basically, you, whereas you go on an ocean cruise and it's all about the big shows and the live yeah. bands and whatever. River cruise well, isn't you, about that. It's a spe- you know, with Avalon, that's not the case. They've got some music playing in the lounges every night, um, sometimes they'll have a film on in the club lounge, but tonight for the first time, they had uh, a band on who, who came on who were obviously local to Cologne yeah. and because we weren't sailing until 10.30 at night they came on and they did a set from 9 till just after 10 o'clock actually so yeah. they, did, they did a few for a few on course and I have to say they had the, the dance Brilliant. floor rammed they were and, very good you know people cutting loose Carol was up there you yeah know, me and sh- Fran were sh- shaking up. shaking your fan and all that sort of stuff <laughs> it so, was yeah. brilliant and they were really good and then, yeah. and then when they finished they you know they kept the mood going so they were playing some yeah. the great disco classics and, and a good time sorry about that I just had a small earthquake in the cabin <laughs> yeah. and, um, and a good time was had by all yes it was it was yeah, great it was, it was a real fun evening um, and we went to bed about midnight which river cruising you're not going to be up till the party no. until two three in the morning well unless i guess you're in a port and you you could have done that in amsterdam yeah. i guess couldn't you yeah. um but there's so much to do in the day you can't do both no. we've learned can't you just can't do it because you burn out and and you're going to so many fantastic places the river cruise is all about it's destination led isn't it i yeah. think um but being on a fabulous ship like avalon just really adds to that experience 
We woke up to a very misty, eerie morning as we entered the Rhine Gorge. The Rhine Gorge was the heart of the medieval Holy Roman Empire and the region was a magnet for great artistry. Eventually, the mist lifted, revealing beautiful blue skies. Unfortunately, the temperatures remained extremely low. In your cabin, you'll find some warm, fluffy blankets that are ideal for occasions just like this. They also provided us with some hot, mulled wine, which went down a treat. Our cruise director Daniela gave us a running commentary throughout our transition of the Rhine Gorge, pointing out various points of interest. Her knowledge of this area was exceptional. The Rhine Gorge has more castles than any other stretch of river in the world. This region is also very famous for its wine, producing some of the finest Riesling anywhere in Germany. Sadly, despite many attempts, Carol still can't take to Riesling and always reverts back to her favourite, a nice glass of Sauvignon Blanc. So, was it worth enduring the freezing temperatures to sail through the Rhine Gorge? Absolutely yes. This has got to be one of the most stunning places we've ever sailed through. Now we'll leave you with some more wonderful views. Join us in episode 3 where our next port of call is Rudersheim. Not heard of it? You'll definitely want to go there when you watch the next episode. And if you haven't watched our Panorama Suite Tour yet, you can do that too.